Hi, I'm Sunny. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, we're back today with another guest artist. We're going to be joined today by Alana Castle from the Glazing Sun in Pennsylvania. And Alana is going to be showing us how she uses underglaze transfers on bisque mold, pottery molds, which is going to be fun and like a little bit different. Um, so that'll be fun. She's going to show us how she makes a peace sign on those. And so while we wait just for a minute, um, I'm going to go over just a little business like we always do. Um, you can always find information about today's guest and all past guests on our website, alontransfers.com. We have a great resource page called Guest Artists. You can find the list of all the tools used in the lives, links to watch back if you don't want to go on the Instagram page and also written instructions for how to apply transfers and decals. And there are some free videos for download on how to do all those things. We have a great Facebook group called Alon Transfers and Decals. There are over 24, 25,000 members at this point. It's a great place to go. Don't have to talk about just Elon transfers, but it's a great spot if you want feedback or just community. People are really um, kind uh, and like to share their work there. I will have a discount code at the end for 10% off. That's good through midnight tonight. And as always, we always choose two viewers who are kind of contributing thoughtfully in the chat to receive a free sample pack. Um, and you'll get that uh, in your DMs afterwards if you win that. So um, speaking of the chat, I, we love questions. We love to hear your questions. If you wouldn't mind maybe putting your name before your question, I usually am batch answering and taking notes and then kind of um, asking all at, at once instead of interrupting. So we'd love to hear from you. Um, you might also see some other members of the long group, um, Glen Lee Farms, Willow and Moon Studio, Dirty Deeks, any of those, if they're answering questions in the chat, they are great resources and they will be able to answer questions for you. So um, we're just gonna wait for uh, Alana to come on. Um, and then we're gonna be talking about, she's gonna be showing us how she does a cool peace sign design on pottery bisque molds, which is gonna be really cool. So I'm gonna get her in right now. Just getting her in. There we go. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Thanks for joining us, yeah, Alana. I'm excited, yeah, it's Alana. Alana, perfect, okay. Um, I was gonna say, and this you can tell from behind you, your style is so colorful. It's so fun. Um, I would love to know about like your background as an artist, like how you got into this and like kind of what yeah. your artistic journey is. Yeah, so I've always like really been into art since I was a kid, but when I was going to college for nursing, I was actually working, yeah, at like a pottery painting studio. Um, and when I was working there, I was like, oh my gosh, like small businesses are so cool. Like this would be a really cool way to like make money and like be in the art field. And I liked how, you know, people were coming in and creating things that weren't even artists. So I just started painting stuff there. People were like asking to buy it when I would post pictures on Facebook and started doing some like craft shows and kind of just ran with it, taught myself like as I was working there. So yeah, and then now I have my own store and I have my own studio where people can come and paint pottery too. So yeah. How did, how did you get from working somewhere, nursing school, <laughs> to owning your own? Was it just kind of like yeah, I mean, the right circumstance? Yeah, so it was like a, I think this is like year six or seven I've been doing pottery. So seven years ago was when I was working at the studio. And yeah, I kind of just took a leap and was like, oh, I'm going to try, you know, a craft show. So like I painted a bunch of stuff, was kind of saving up for it. And when I did my first show, I made like a decent amount of money and I was like, okay, let's try this. So I was just doing it on the side for a while. By the way, quit nursing school because I was like, absolutely no, <laughs> absolutely no. And um, yeah, so actually during COVID, my Etsy kind of took off and I was shipping out lots of stuff almost every day, painting in my mom's attic, firing at the pottery studio I was working at. They were totally supportive and like cool with me, you know, doing my own thing. And yeah, I opened a store two years ago and it was like a mix of my pottery and like other small businesses items. 
quickly outgrew that space. It was very small. It was like 300, 400 square feet and um, found my space I have now in um, a town, just like one town over. And it was so much larger that I was like, well, I could add like the pottery painting studio into here and people could, you know, do their own thing. And I love doing that at the Pottery Works um, where I worked. And yeah, so I've been open here almost two years now. That's amazing. I love that. All right. So you're going to show us how you do the underglaze transfers on like the bisque molds yes. that you can get, which yeah, is so, cool. Yeah. I'm not like, I don't throw, I do have a wheel, but I'm just, this is obviously I came into it with using the bisque. So it's kind of just what I ran with. And when I came across the transfers, I was like, Oh, like, can I use this on here? Um, so it was a lot of trial and error at first because I didn't know how to do it. But yeah, so I'm going to show everyone how to make this, like, I call it like a quilted peace sign mug. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I love that. I And this is really cool too, because it's something that like just a person could do. You could walk in and okay. maybe do this at a paint your own place, which is fun and not something that we've talked about before. All okay. right. So if you want to set up your demo, okay. I'm going to go ahead and pull the audience. And okay, cool. all right. So if you have done kind of like a collage with underglaze transfers like to make like a peace sign or a shape comment one and if you've never tried that before if it's something totally new comment two and then just as a reminder um as she's getting set up i we would love to hear questions in the chat if you want to put your name before that would be great i'm going to be taking notes and just kind of asking questions in batches so i'm not interrupting her a lot uh, okay, good. We have some ones, some people who have tried this before. That's really fun. Yay. I love this. I am working on something that I'm not going to show you because I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm like really excited for it. So I hope Yay. it's like kind of along these lines. Um, and then also just a reminder, if you see like um, Dirty Deeks, Glenley Farm, Willow and Moon Studio in the chat, those are all members of the Elan group. So they can answer your questions. Like if I'm not getting to them, you can listen to them. Um, all right, Alana, are you yep. good? Yeah, I am okay. good to go. Okay, let us so, go ahead. Yeah, so the first thing about doing it on bisque is, you know, obviously the transfer is like the wet clay. So bisque is super, super dry, as everybody knows. Um, so what I do first is I paint the mug first. So like with this one, I used, um, so I used Stroke and Coat Mako. This is um, Awkward. Um, so I painted three coats of that. So. Today I'm gonna do, um, uh, I'm gonna just do a white background cause it's kind of fun to use white cause then I like to go in and like do like dots and stuff in the flowers. So this was a white one that I've done before. Um, so yeah, so I have already painted this with like two or three coats, but I'm gonna go in and just paint a fresh coat quick while I get like my transfers ready and it'll dry during that. Mm -hmm. Um, cause like mm -hmm. I said, it, it doesn't, you don't want it to be too wet. Um, because, uh, I'm sure with clay also, if it's too wet, you know, you can't really do much with it. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to paint that where I'm going to put the peace sign and then we're going to let that dry. So what I did was I just went on like Canva and I found a peace sign that I felt like, you know, would fit well with it. And I printed that out and cut it out. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna have your, whatever shape, you can do many different shapes with this. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay this down and then you're gonna go through and get all your colors. And I recommend, you know, cutting like a small section out of your transfer paper. So we're gonna use orange, we're gonna use Use pink and turquoise. I love these flowers. This is one of my favorite patterns. I was okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So these are my favorite too. This is like I use a lot of different ones, but these are my favorite. <laughs> and then we're gonna use yellow. So she's just cutting those big sheets down into yes. more manageable sizes so that she can get yes. into the shape she wants. Way more easy to like maneuver and whatnot. Yeah. 
So then once you have all your papers, so like I have four sections, so I have four different colors, then you're gonna go through and you can decide where you want which color. It doesn't really matter, it's really personal preference. Um, and then when you're doing this, make sure your transfer part is side down. So when you go to put it on the mug, the shapes line up. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do yellow first. So I'm gonna put it over top. I'm gonna take my pen and kind of trace to then cut out that shape. And I recommend going like a lit, just like a little bit bigger. That way, like if you need to cut it down, you have some room and you're not like out of transfer. That's really smart. So there's and, that. And that's a great tip, making sure your transfer is facing down. Yeah. Last weekend, I mean, I've done that so many times. I put on a white transfer. I was going and I was yep. like, why is this smearing so much? And I was like, oh, just kidding. And it was this exact yep. transfer. It was the white flowers. <laughs> I have definitely done that before. <laughs> yeah, and especially if you like mix and match, you're going to be so confused when you try to put them on. You're like, what is happening? <laughs> All right, so there's those two. And then we have pink. And I would say like sometimes when it's like a smaller section, you know, I try to line it up where there's like a full flower kind of thing. And I love, love how you, you said you went on Canva and you kind of found that shape. Yes. And it. That's such yep. a great tip. Yeah, so you could do this with like many different things. Um, I've really only done the peace sign, but um, I've been thinking about maybe trying like a mushroom or something like that. That would be cute. Yeah, anything that has like an outline really you can do. I will say that this is not related to transfers, but if anyone has ever heard of Game of Shrooms, it's in Ooh. June. It's like a worldwide mushroom scavenger hunt and what? artists go onto the map and like say where they're gonna hide stuff. <gasps> and you just hide mushroom art pieces like around your town on that day. And anybody can go look from. So oh, that's I'm, I'm a fan so of cool. That would be fun. I love that. I've never heard of that. Mm, it's yeah, it's cute. All right. So then I'm just cutting out the shapes. To get ready to transfer them. <clears throat> Yeah, I really want to, I was like playing around this morning with maybe doing a butterfly next. I feel like that would be really that would pretty. Be really cool. Yeah. All right. There's yellow. Someone said that these are so fun on the bottom of a mug. And I, I agree. I love, I love putting just like a little. I have been surprise. thinking about doing that. Yeah, that would be so cute. Yeah. All right, so now we have our full shape. And then I'm gonna take my mug and I'm gonna basically like trace on the peace sign so that I know it's gonna like line up right. Um, you can do it two ways. You can like just put it on here and you know, use a pencil or you can use a um, tracing paper too, which that, is probably more guaranteed that it'll line up. Um, so you kind of just put this on. If you've never used this before, you want to put the dark red side down. And then you can put your peace sign over top. And it would be smart to tape it down and whatnot, but you know, for ease of. <laughs> All right, yeah. And so you had painted on some stroke and coat, and that's like basically dry now, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So as long as it's like, I mean, when you paint something, you pretty much know whether it's dry enough or not. Um, you just don't want it to be like bone dry because it just doesn't, the decals don't transfer as well then. Yeah. Yeah, you need a little moisture to get it. To yes. Stick. Yeah. Yep. And if anyone is unsure, um, just in general about she's using the tracing paper, if you are like writing on your piece with like pencil or pen or tracing paper, that's going to burn off in the kiln. I yeah. do that all the time. I get in there with my pen or my pencil. And I even before I glaze, I'll write 
what glaze I want to put on each piece that'll yeah. just burn off. Yep. All right. So I didn't get the whole thing, but we have a gist of, you know, what we're going to put on there. So then when I go to transfer, I use a sponge, which I'm assuming you use on regular clay too. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I use water also. Oh no, I just got water on my yellow. Oops. It should be fine. Good. We'll do that one first. That first yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then you just put them on, line them up. And then I just use the sponge to kind of dab it on there. You don't want to use a ton of water, just a little mm -hmm. bit. That's a tip I always give. You can always add yep. more water, yep. but if you add too much and it bleeds, that's it. You're exactly you're to wipe it off. Or, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I actually recommend like putting them all on and then taking them off. So we're going to do the blue next. Yes. Yeah, so this is a um, bisque mold and she yes. did put stroking coat on. Yep. Yeah. So I painted the coats the two or three ish coats um this morning um because it stays you know fairly like wet still and then i just reapplied one more coat while i was getting my transfers ready orange this is very peaceful to watch. I like this. <laughs> How fitting. It's peaceful yeah, to watch yeah. the peace mug. <laughs> and then we have pink. And just double check that you have the right side. Been there. Yep. Yeah. I'm sure we all have. Right. And then, you know, go around maybe one more time for good measure. All right. And then I just go through, I use this like needle point tool because I normally use my fingers, but I feel like we all know it always gets messed up if you just use your fingers. Yeah. yeah. A needle tool is very handy to have, yeah. not just like in your studio, but around for this. Kind oh, of yeah. Thing. Yep. Yeah. For sure. And then I kind of just go around and pick some of the edges mm -hmm. up. I did see, I wish I had one in arm's reach. It's like just far away. Someone um, on an, another live used, um, not a paintbrush, but it had one of those like little silicone tips on it. Oh, and it, yeah. she was doing it on bisque and she was able to just kind of like roll the paper off, oh. which was also cool. A cool Interesting. Tip. Yeah. yeah. Right. And there we go. Oh. Cute. So, and then... Once you're done with that, I let it dry a little bit, and then I normally go in and outline it with some kind of darker color. That way, if you do have, like, you know, like, bleeding or anything, um, and it just crisps up the peace sign so you can see it better. So, um, I don't know. What color should we use? We have a white background. Maybe we'll do, let's see, I did teal here. Maybe we'll do purple. I love, no. I'm literally sitting here next to a bunch of purple stroking oh. coats. So purple's hey, my there favorite. You go. <laughs> All right, let's see. I really like, hmm, I really like 85, which is actually what I did on this one. This oh, is yeah. like one of my favorite colors. Um, and that one's called Orchid. Mm -hmm. I think I have that one right here too. Yeah. <laughs> so. With my recommendation for doing something like this is definitely a liner brush, something very like long and skinny. Um, also, when I do lining, I add like a little bit of water to the glaze, just so like you don't have to constantly be re-adding paint to your brush. Cause you know, when you're trying to be like really steady, um, it just helps that way. But yeah, then I just go through and I, outline the mug starting with like the edge would you also do like three coats on this 
So I would say if you wanted to be really like defining, I probably would, especially with this color, just because it is kind of a lighter one. Mm -hmm. But if you do black, I would only do like one. You really only need one. Yeah, that'll cover. Yeah. If anyone has any questions, this would be a great time to drop them into the chat and then yeah. I, can, I can ask away. Also, Dirty Deeks has been in the um, chat answering some questions. Um, they are in the Elan group, so they're knowledgeable. Trust them. <laughs> <laughs> they're not some random stranger. Yeah. Yeah, so I've done, like, um, I use these transfers a lot. Like, these are my favorite to use. And I, I just like playing around with different color combinations underneath of them. And I'll also do, like, like I do a lot of dots also. So I'll go through and do cute little dots, like, on the inside of the flowers. Very cute. Okay, so we've got a couple of questions. I'm going to scroll okay. back here. Okay, so one is, do you have to add a glaze if you're putting a transfer onto bisque? No, you do not have to add a glaze onto it. You can, um, but you can apply it directly to bisque. You might want to add a little moisture to the surface before you try to put it on. Just because bisque is dry, the underglaze needs something to kind of like soak into and grab onto. Um, so maybe spray it with a like a mister bottle or just like wipe it with a sponge before you put the transfer on. And that's going to help. Uh, let's see. I'm scrolling through these questions from everybody. Um, a way to avoid crawling on transfers when you apply it on bisque. Uh, Christina, do you have any tips in the, in the, in the chat for that? Um, let's see. How could someone use a stencil for the outline behind? Okay. So another, um, cool way that you can do shapes is that you can use a paper cutter. Again, I wish I had one sitting right next to me, but it's like those, um, like, paper cutters from like scrapbooking yep. where you like the in. punch out yeah yeah like a punch yeah and mm -hmm. so all you need to do is take your transfer and put it between a sheet of paper it's Ooh. just gonna give it a little bit of stability so it doesn't just like rip through that thin right paper. and then you could do all kinds of shapes i mean you could do hearts and dots and like you can find anything like at michael's or joann's or on amazon so that might be a fun way um to try doing shapes without having to like drama on there yeah um let's see are, are there as a tutorial for tips to have a solid um transfer so if you're applying it not on bisque i would say you need to burnish it more which is kind of rubbing it in or using like a rubber rib and just like spending a little bit more time on it it might need a little bit more moisture um there are a couple videos that we have uh, on our page and like on my personal page, which is Sunny Has Pottery, where you can like really see the difference in the color of the transfer when it's ready to peel. Because if you're looking at the transfer and there's still maybe like a little bit of white, it's not quite ready yet. So I would say take some more time um, and spend a little bit more time on it. That usually will help um, get a more solid transfer, uh, which is kind of an annoying answer, but. <laughs> Just practice it. Yeah, it's a lot of practice and trial and error. Yeah. Can you apply glaze over the transfer paper? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. I Again, that's something that I would test. You would want a glaze that's kind of transparent. Um, like Christina just said in the chat, something like, like a Chino or a Celadon. Um, definitely test it. Maybe do a little test tile and throw a glaze on and see how it looks. But yeah, you can definitely do some um, non-clear glazes over you just have to try it and see what works that looks great yeah so pretty much done um i'm just gonna go in for fun and i have this really cool dotting gyre they call it i don't know what gyre means but that's what it's called um and it has like all these fun different you know um like diameter of dots that you can do um but yeah, I just go in, like, I'm using a Jaded right now by Mako, um, which is one of my favorite colors also. This is just serendipitous. You're using all my favorite colors that I have oh, just sitting right in front of yes! me. Yes! <laughs> I love it. We have a similar color scheme then. Yeah. 
very springy. Yeah. Yeah, so these are fun to use. Um that's a very cool tool. I've never seen one of those before. I like yes. that it was a gyre. Yeah, so it's called a dying gyre. It's actually by Bisque Imports, which is where I get a lot of my forms from. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, I 10 out of 10 recommend. And you could definitely use these in clay too for like different textures. I'm writing it down. Yeah. Dot, dotting G Y R E. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Yeah, cool. they're fun. People really like to use them in my studio. So, yeah, that's neat. neat. But yeah, yeah, since you know we have like a bunch of different colors on, I'm just going to go in. This is my Blue Heaven from Mako, which is like a, a really, really light blue. Mm -hmm. I also have like a color chart right here that you can see. So like um, my outline was this color, which is orchid. And then I just did dots of jaded, which is this teal. And now I'm using uh, my blue heaven. So after you are finished with this, do you put yeah. clear glaze on top of that? Or do you just kind of leave it as is? I normally do. You, I don't think you technically have to because obviously uh, the stroking coat is a glaze that works like an underglaze. But just for, you know, like food safe reasons, I do normally just dunk them in the clear glaze. Mm -hmm. yep. And then I'll have you, when you're done, show us the other white. We just had a question about that like white stroking coat, like how it shows oh. through the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. transfers. Yeah, so this is the white by itself. And this is the white that I used on this cup that I did. And then that has clear yeah. on top. Yes, this all has clear on top. Yep. That looks great. Thanks. Yeah, and I um, also just started doing these, like, fun canvases, which – let me put this down so I don't drop it um, – like, picture kind of things. So, like, this one, like, this is white – I used, I think I used awkward again on this. And then this, I kind of did like an ombre mm -hmm. kind of. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, I used like masking tape and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah that was great. Was you, you said you'd only done the peace sign, but I know this is cool. I know this is the, I literally just pulled this out of the kiln yesterday. Cause I was like starting to get inspired. Then like, well, I could do so many other things. I love that. Yeah, so that's a canvas that you can like hang on the wall. So that one's really cool. But yeah, so then on the inside, I used um, Mako's Jungle Gems. This one is Citrus Splash, which these are really fun to use. But yeah. Awesome. And just like as a reminder for people, uh, if you fire above cone six, you don't have to put a clear glaze on top of your transfer. It'll be food safe and like it won't come off in the dishwasher. Obviously, you still can. Uh, but you don't have to if it's above cone six. Yeah. Yeah. And so I I fired a cone 06. So I'm like low fire glazes mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. That, but yeah. So that looks great. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. Well, if you want to switch your camera back around, if anybody has any right. questions, this is a great time to ask them. Um, two people who kind of been contributing in the chat today will win a free sample pack from um, alontransfers.com. You'll get a DM in your um instagrams if you instagram messages if you uh won that so keep an eye out for that and then um once alana is like all set we have some um rapid fire questions that we kind of ask all the artists that we have on cool. um so mm -hmm. if you're ready yeah okay so i mean it. we kind of, kind of did this already what's your favorite elon underglaze transfer it's the flowers i'm actually not sure what their like correct title is on the website but might be tiny flowers maybe yeah, if christina knows yeah you might be right uh let's see um what okay while you're working in the studio what do you like to do you like to listen to anything i mostly do podcasts um i do like when my store's open i'm always playing like my store playlist so you know i kind of get sick of that so I'm more of a podcast person. Um, let's see, what do I listen to? I listen to Armchair Expert, mm -hmm. which is um, Dak Shepard. I listen to Girls Gotta Eat, which is like a two girl like duo just talking about life. Um, I listen to Andrew Collin, who's a comedian. Um, but yeah, that's it. I normally am a podcast person.
Love that. Yeah, I love podcasts too. Yeah. And then, I mean, this kind of relates. Usually it's a little off topic, um, but we all love flowers. Yeah. So what is your favorite flower? Ooh. Oh, I will say like I'm definitely love like a wildflower combination, you know, just like fun different colors, but I would have to say a sunflower because I think it's cool how they come in so many different colors. Like they're not just yellow. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. sunflowers. Okay. So we have a couple little last questions that are coming in. So number one, um, the dotting tool, it's a dotting G Y R E. We will link it kind of in yeah. the show notes on the resource page on our website, alontransfers.com. We'll make sure that tool is in there because that's really cool. Yeah. I would like one. Um, <laughs> another person asked um, if you still have an Etsy shop, like do you still sell your pieces yeah. not in your shop? So I don't do Etsy anymore. I have a website. It's just the glazing and you mm -hmm. can go on there and I don't have any of these listed, but I will definitely get one up there for sure. <laughs> But I have other things. I do lots of like drippy glazes and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And then otherwise, if someone doesn't live in Pennsylvania, what's the best way that they can kind of support you? Yeah. So you can support me on this Instagram at the glazing sun on my website. But yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And that will all be linked. Um, we will repost this afterwards if you want to follow her. And then also on alantransfers.com, we'll have all links to all that info. Um, Alana, this was great. That was Thank so you. cool. And I love seeing that. Um, I'm going to share real quick the promo code for everybody. It's cool. spring 10. It's for 10% off. It's good until midnight tonight. Um, so you can use that if you want to get some tiny flowers and make your own collages yes yeah um, and if anyone is ever in marietta i'm in marietta pennsylvania stop by my store shop or come paint something yeah. yeah perfect and if anybody's watching and you make one of these like collages make sure you tag along transfer so we can see it maybe we'll share it Yay. um this was great thank you so much for joining us we'll be back soon with another artist and i love talking to you today thanks for Yay. coming up thank you bye, bye. bye.